I'm going to talk about a few different techniques in this video and a few different things that I do to try and help my blocks to land more often. So if that sounds like something that might help you, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video where I give a few extra kind of top tips and don't forget to subscribe for more teeth. So I think the, the inferior alveolar nerve block is one of those things that I remember that whenever, whenever I was a student, it was one of those things that's like, I'm gonna try this, I don't know if it's gonna work, and sometimes you can just even be guessing where you're gonna inject. With a few years of experience, I have I think I've worked it out, <laughs> um, and I managed to get my blocks to land 95% of the time. Sometimes you, you miss them, and I think more often than that, it's, it's because of anatomy, and that person might just have slightly different anatomy. So I think landing the blocks every time, or most of the time, um, really comes down to identifying your landmarks. With the ID nerve block there are two important landmarks that we need to look at. There's a bony landmark and a soft tissue landmark. The bony landmark is going to be looking at the at the mandible and the coronoid notch of the mandible and that's where we're going to place our thumb. The other one is the pterygomandibular raphe and this it's hard to explain, it's easier to show a picture. So, so if we look at our first landmark there, which is the, the coronoid notch, that is where we're gonna place our thumb. And that area where we place our thumb kind of determines what height we're going to then inject at. Because you'll draw an imaginary line in your head as to where that's gonna bisect along that uh, depression to show you where the injection has to be. That also comes down to our second landmark, which is the soft tissue landmark, the pterygomandibular raphe, and that'll help us identify where that depression is because it's just in front of that, and you'll be able to see that again better in the, in the images that I put up. So when it actually comes to, to doing the injection, I will always have the patient probably about half reclined. I'll ask them to open it as wide as they can and wider again. I'll then place the thumb of my non-dominant hand on the coronoid notch. Then I'm going to look and see for my soft tissue landmarks. Then with my needle I'm going to come in from the opposite side over the premolars on the contralateral side and start to approach the area that I'm that I'm going to eject and then it's really important that we touch against bone because that's the depth that we need to be at. If you're not touching on bone you need to, to relocate. If you if you touch if you don't touch bone I withdraw the needle, swing the needle further back into the patient's mouth so that the needle itself will move forward. If it goes the other way and if you think you touch bone too soon, again withdraw and move the barrel of the syringe more medially and then re-inject to contact bone a little bit later. I, I then always stress to the patient that for this to work you're going to have to feel that your your lip has gone fat and that you'll feel that this numbness is going to this numbness is going to affect your your lip and your tongue as well so a few of my top tips for this in in my own experience and i've seen other people do this as well and this is kind of advice that i had got early on as well is rather than injecting at that imaginary line where your thumb will bisect go higher than that and i've been told to kind of inject at the level of the maxillary plane and the idea behind this i think is to get the nerve way before it's going to enter the mandibular foramen and it just increases the success rate massively i think the really important thing here is still identifying your landmarks and knowing where the bone is and contacting bone is is the most important thing i find that if there's blocks that i'm given where i'm not sure if i'm contacting bone those are the ones that are always going to miss but if I contact bone and I miss, I will put that down to anatomy. I've also heard a lot recently of, of people actually using articane for their blocks. Now, I think there was research done before that kind of showed that it's, it's kind of risky. Um, so I, I don't do it, although I've seen that there are other people that do it. Articane for a block is kind of like using a cheat code because Articane with the block is just like a hundred percent accurate. If you if you use Articane and you're aiming higher as well, like at the level of the maxillary plane, yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna land. They're gonna get very very numb and probably very numb for a very long time. <laughs> the other the other challenge I think that people run into a lot with blocks as well. It can be the tongue, and the tongue can really really get in the way of a lot of different things, especially with people that have tongues that kind of fill a lot of space in their mouth. 
and especially if they're a little bit reclined, it, the tongue can kind of fall back as well. I find, and then if, if you ask someone, relax your tongue, their tongue will just go crazy and it's it's gonna be everywhere. So I only found this out recently and someone else told me this, but if you just give the tongue a little poke with the needle, it will retract back and it'll flatten down. I, I, I tell the patient that you're gonna do it, you just feel a little pinch on your tongue here first and then it'll go away. Um, and that gives you maybe about 15 or 20 seconds then to be able to do your block and get your injection done. If you liked that video and if you found that that was helpful, maybe watch this other video, please like and subscribe.